Gillian, pretty dull week for the JSE, but it's a very nice rise today. It looks like we are going counter to the developed markets. So we've got the Dow down today. We've got the European markets looking pretty flat or weaker. Our market jumping up, and it's a reverse of what we've seen for most of the week. Do you think this just illustrates that the move we're seeing from emerging markets into developed markets, that we have broken trend here? I think it's too early to say we've broken trend, but certainly I think um, there's a change in view in terms of the risk trade, in terms of emerging markets. I think Egypt has certainly reflected that there is political risk inherent. So I think people looking at you know, the equity risk premium, they're applying to emerging markets and reassessing that. And also I think the value paradigm of the developed world is certainly coming to the fore. You know, if one looks at you can buy you know, stocks, you know, you know, the Unilevers of this world, you know, the Crafts of this world, the PNGs of this world, the Colgates of this world, it's significantly lower multiples than you can pay for, say, Tiger Brands for that matter. Um, you know, the value paradigm has just got too stark relative to risk. Let's take a look at some of the movers we had today. And one of the biggest movers this morning was Gold Reef Resorts. We had the Competition Tribunal approving that merger unconditionally. And there was a concern after the Competition Commission wanted it to sell the Silver Star Casino out on the West Strand. Looks like they can keep that. So we had that share price up nicely. SAB Miller also up because that's one of the main shareholders in Soho San. Right. I think it's a fantastic coup for Sab Miller and for Soho. Um, certainly, Jalba will be delighted with the, with the outcome of this. I was quite surprised, in fact, because I think the concentration risk is high. They now dominate the Gauteng market in terms of gaming. Uh, certainly, there was significant capitalization with the opening of, of the casino. It really did hurt Monte Casino at the time. So I think they now can drive a very clever, cogent way of carving up this market. So I think it's very, very positive for the group. Does this create an asset that fund managers and institutional investors will be interested in because it really is going to be an asset of scale, isn't it? It certainly is an asset of scale. And I think gaming has shown uh, its anti, you know, sort of counter-cyclical uh, behavior, uh, particularly in our market. Uh, I certainly think that uh, there's a lot of upside as a result, a lot of synergies to be extracted from this acquisition. Another positive trading statement out today, that was from Metaret. It expects a 136% jump in adjusted headline earnings per share uh, for the six months to December. Pretty confusing though, because it has changed this year end. So they're comparing the six months to December to the six months to June, because they're actually going to be reporting for an 18 month period, but it still looks quite good. Yeah, I think uh, the stock price is certainly discounting a lot of the good news though. And I think if one looks at the copper price at 450 um, versus the marginal cost of production for most producers, somewhere between 220, 230, um, it's interesting to see whether the copper can sustain its lofty levels. Uh, certainly, it is a nice way of playing Africa. Um, good exposure to Africa. It must be an acquisition target at some point in time. Uh, copper is, a, is, is, you know, is hot property at the moment in the resources sector. Um, but you know, from our perspective, when one looks at the, the fundamentals, we do feel it's fully priced at these levels. And finally, Group 5, a revised trading update, as if the first one wasn't bad enough, they've brought out another one. Um, and it really boils down to their aggregates and ready mix assets. It looks like they've had to uh, take some impairments there due to the, the circumstances in the market at this stage. Sure. Uh, talk of the mining sector dumping into the aggregate market. Uh, they've taken a further 450 million write down. Um, I suppose if one, the value uh, fund managers who are looking at the construction sector and feel vilified, They've said that the ROEs and the margins are well above trend and have been for some time. Certainly, we expect a pullback in the sector. It has been hard hit. It's been a really poor performing sector over the last quarter, in fact, over the last year. But I think if one looks at the outlook, the government's desire to create jobs, very big capital spend projects coming through, think about Eskom, the ports. Uh, so I think on a two-year basis, I think there is certainly a rosy picture out there. But medium term, I think caution is the way. Do you think we might get some more announcements during the budget in two weeks' time that could give a bit of a hope for these construction companies? Um, I think the budget will just confirm government's uh, commitment to expenditure on infrastructure. Um, but I still think the construction companies have a lot to digest. Um, I think the companies are trading, uh, if one looks at the implied multiples based on the forward book, and particularly if you look at some of the write-downs, look at Murray and Roberts, um, I think there's going to be uh, a tough time ahead for them, particularly from a share price performance, over the next three to six months.